Hello viewers and welcome to my channel. I'm back again. My name is Tola and today I'll be teaching you how to how to make bodies, how to make basic bodies, the pattern to make it. In our last video, if you haven't watched it, that is where I taught you how to how to measure, how to measure for these bodies. So today, today I'm going to make the pattern and I'll be using my own measurements. This I have my own measurement. These are the things I will be needing. This is my shoulders width is 14.5, both is 36 and the likes. Now, I've observed that in pattern drafting, there's one thing I know that gave me probably a difficult time was in calculating armhole circumference or its depth or knowing what the armhole circumference of the front would eventually be or the back would eventually be. So I'm going to make it simple for you by this formula which I usually use and it has, it has always been true for, for all sizes. So first, note this, the handhold depth, why I was measuring was 9, but to, to note its actual depth and how its distribution is from this armhole circumference, I need to know what the total, the total round of what the front armhole would be like. Now my own armhole is 18. So my front armhole, the formula is actually armhole circumference divided by 2 for the front. I will now add 0 0.5 inches. So at the end of the day, when I construct my pattern, my front armhole should have 9.5 inches. And the back armhole is my armhole, which is 18, divided by 2 minus 0 0.5 inches. The back armhole is 8.5. As we all know, or maybe you don't know, but usually... The, the front armhole would come inside much more than the front. And while it comes inside, it means that it's, it has more area coverage. So that is why it's, it's bigger in size than the back armhole. Now, the armhole depth actual length. Why I measure this dummy then from, I said from the, from the bone of the neck down to where the armhole itself is here. Yeah. It was 9 for 8, but remember there is a shoulder slope. So, hence, because of the shoulder slope, you don't know where it is ending, where the shoulder slope is ending. You need to know your own armhole depth, the real length itself. So, it is armhole circumference divided by 2 minus x. This x is a variant because of our different sizes. Now, I am armhole 18. If your armhole is within the range of 15 inches to 17 inches, when you divide your armhole divided by 2, you minus 1 from it. If your armhole is around 18 inches to 19 inches, you minus 1.25. If it is 20 to 21 inches, it is 1.5. If it is 22 inches, it is 1.75. Anything below, anything above 22 inches, which is 23 inches armhole, 24, 25, 26, just minus 2, 2 inches, then you are, you are good to go. So for mine, my handhold actual depth length will be 18 divided by 2 minus 1.25. So mine is 7.75. Now, let's get down to business. This is my paper. This paper... From this paper, by the time we are through with its construction, you should be able to translate, you should be able to transfer this on your clothes and cut it. So this is on fold. Take your paper, you measure out the length of your desired blouse length. My blouse length is 25. This is what I desire. It could be shorter than that, but this is what I want. So you make sure your your the length of your paper is more than that 25 i have 28 inches here now the width of my paper here should be should be like your my hip is the biggest size should be like my hip divided by two which is 20 plus like extra six inches extra six inches this is because of all the small small allowance like the zip allowance like the the seam the seam allowance too so here, you should have the biggest part of your measurement, if it's your bust, if it's your hip, the biggest part of your measurement divided by 2 plus additional 6 inches. Now, 
Having done that, you should transfer your measurements. Mark the vertical, the vertical measurements and mark the horizontal measurements. Now for the vertical measurements, on the fold here, mark your blouse length. This, this is my blouse length 25, starting from here, 25. So, okay, so you rule the beginning, that's 1 to 25, rather 0 to 25, that's the blast length. Then, from the handhold depth you measured here, which is 9, measures your 9 here, 9, 9, 9, then rule. Your bust point is 10. So you measure 10, 10, 10, and rule. Your half length, which is around the waist, so you measure half length 16, 16, 16, 16, connects together. Now, this area that I label hip, the hip is usually around 8 centimeter, 8 inches or 7.5 inch in short or petite women. Seven seven inches to around eight or maximum of nine for people that are quite tall. So I used eight for myself. So eight inches from the half length, eight inches from the half length, you connect the lines. Having connected these lines, this now transfer your horizontal measurement. Your horizontal measurement are the measurement you took circumference of the measurements where you were passing your tip around your body. In a round round manner so for the handhold depth line handhold depth line nine you will still mark your bust as as horizontal measurement there so my bust is 36 remember this is on fold both the back is on fold and the front is on fold so my back and my front pattern will be divided into four whatever measurement i want to use for horizontal measurement will be divided by four so my boss divided by four is nine. So on this, on this my armhole depth line, I'll measure nine. On my boss point line itself, I'll measure nine. On my half length, I will measure exactly where the waist would be. My waist is thirty one point five, and divided by four. You know you can't do that accurately. Take your tape through thirty one point five like this. Mm. This is half. Like this, this is one over four of it. So I have my one over four right here. Now I need to include the dart measurements. What the dart does is to make our clothes have a, a, a nicer curve, especially where there are slopes on our body. There's a slope of the underbust down to the stomach. There's a slope at the back which curves into the butt into the buttocks here. So you need you need to take in extra clothes. You need taking extra clothes to, to show a little firmness. Meanwhile, remember that this basic body is not for an overall fitness of, of a blouse that would shape in your breasts and bring out corset. This is just a basic body. Later in, in, in other videos, I will teach you how to do that manipulation and other, and other areas where that is applicable and your clothes will be more fitted. But for this, this is just basic. You need this to be able to construct a, a complex one. So I had two centimeter to two centimeter as my dart as my as my dart. So I'll put an additional this space is this space is where my is where my waist ends. This is additional two centimeter. So now on my hip line, my hip is 40. So divided by four, that is 10. I would add 0 0.5 centimeter for ease so that when I wear the blouse, it's not too tight around this region because if it's too tight, it, it will have a tendency to fold or to want to come up by itself. So I will add 0 0.5 centimeter or as you wish, maybe like a whole one centimeter. So come to the back and transfer the same. Meanwhile, mark your shoulder. The shoulder width, your shoulder width, my shoulder width is 7.25. It's 15 divided by 2. 
this time around you're not dividing the shoulder by four but rather divided by two remember you didn't take it around like this you only took it once like this so it's just divided by two so seven point two five now the or the horizontal measurement you took for this for the app for the armhole depth nine nine for my half length i'll take the waist plus additional two centimeter for that my hip 40 plus additional 0 0.5 centimeter you realize that i didn't i didn't mark this blouse length for any measurements just wait and see now having done that let's let's calculate um let's mark points for our mm -hmm. armhole depth actual length now for mine which i calculated the other time i have 7.75 from this edge, now take your table up and find 7.75. This is my 7.75. This is where 7.75 is. Now, my shoulder weight is around here. So now I can connect the slope. Why this is quite important and would pay you at the long run is because it is not all the time that a customer obeys the rule of one inch slope and some would obey the rule of half inch slope some even go as far as obeying the rule of two inch slope but with this method with this method it will be firm and fit on their shoulder so having done that go to the back two and do the same find your 7.75 yeah find the shoulder width yeah and connect okay i think before i jump to this one i should have explained the the neck width the neck width as an hard does anyone with a shoulder with a shoulder of around 14 14 to 16 you should use neck width of 3.5 by 4 uh, 3 3 by 4 rather so here i have my neck width as 3 3 by 4 for the front and for the back i'll just lower it by just about one inch so this is three by one for the back this is three by four for the front now connect connect it okay now having determined our armhole real depth we need to construct the, 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 the cuff of the armhole itself. Now, for your front armhole, this is 7.75. Divide this distance, this length, into three. When you divide into three, you, you would have around 2.6 thereabouts. So, for the front, for the front, mark your 2.3. 2.6 rather closest to the line of the of the bust of the bust point area now for the back just find the midpoint the midpoint is around 3.75 okay so have you found that mark this line but make it a temporary line Just note this your line, this line 7, 7.25 for the width. You can make it a dotted line. If you are doing this yourself, I'd advise you use pen so don't use marker so that you can erase your mistakes. So, to so know that what you are doing, that the lines are straight, you can just mark 7.75 here, 7. Um, 7 your shoulder width here, and connect like this and like this so having done this dotted line on this one third length of the of the armhole dates come inside by one inch for the front 
So when you come inside by one inch for the front, this is where the one inch is. For the back, you come inside by just 0 0.5, 0 0.5 centimeter, not inch, 0 0.5 centimeter for the back, but a whooping one inch for the front so that it can, so that it will, it will curve inside well. Now, if you have this kind of curve, this is perfect. Just find the zero part. It has been labeled. There is, there is a part that is labeled zero. If you have it, just locate it. Then make your zero to rest on this, on where your boss itself stops. My own boss stops here. So I'll make my zero here. I'll make my zero to also drop at that point. Then connect it to that one third length. When you connect, just take this kind of ruler. This is your hip ruler. Then connect to the shoulder. So that's it. Then the front, the back. Take the zero part to the zero, the zero, the zero part of this cuff, like this. Let's connect to that 0 0.5 area. Okay. Then connect it to the shoulder slope. So you have this. To be sure that what you are doing is correct. You know, I told you that you need to know what the front arm hole is and the back arm hole. Just take your tape, round them for my front. Like this, like this, like this, and finally like this. This is 9.5. For my back, okay. So now let's join, let's join these lines together. Join the boss point line to the waist. And join it to the hip. Remember, I've added ease of 0 0.5 centimeter to the to the to the hip. Now, come back and do the same for the for the back. We haven't done the dart. Now, the dart for the for the back, this line to this line, find its midpoint. The midpoint is around here. This is the midpoint. Then take the same distance of the midpoint here, transfer it to, to this to this um hammer depth line to the blouse length line. And connect the lines together. Okay. Now, this is the hip line. From the hip line, just move forward like one inch. Now, this is one centimeter, one centimeter. Connect like this. Like this. You see where I'm stopping my lines like this for the front you are not finding you're not going to look for any you're not going to look for the midpoint at all but rather you use your nipple your nipple to nipple distance as a guideline so my nipple to nipple distance is seven so I'll just look for seven divided by two you know it's on fold that's 3.5 centimeter so I'll find 3.5 centimeter here I'll mark 3.5 centimeter here, I'll mark. 3.5 centimeter here, I'll mark. Now, did you realize that I made sure this my dad stop at the actual depth length for the back, but rather this line would stop below the breast points. 
So connect, connect the straight line. We're almost done. So you move up one inch above the hip. See, that's the way we moved up here. And this one, about two centimeter below the bust point. So you don't want it to end exactly here so that it's not create one Madonna peach shaped breast. So one centimeter, one centimeter. Okay. Now, this is this is actually bust length. Why I wanted mine to be longer was because I want this this cuff shape, this cuff shape blouse. So this is what I will do. I'll make sure I'll take my hip cuff ruler. I'll connect it to this line and make sure it stops just around this dart line. So I'll connect like so. I'll come to this. And I'll do the same. Now, we still have one more thing left. To the back, usually you would observe that there are some female clothes that when, when it's worn, this place will bulge out. And this even upper part will bulge out. For this one, the upper part won't bulge out because I've extended this dart up to this area, so it won't bulge out. But for you to eliminate the bulge that comes around the zip, just come inside this your half length area by one centimeter. This is one centimeter. So connect your cuff all to where the dart to also stops. Yeah. Where this dart to where, where the dart to also stops, just a little bit above the hip, like that. So this is this is it. Now there's another issue. Not everybody likes this close neck, this close neck kind of style. You can decide to make yours wide wider. But when you are making it wide, maybe you don't want this three three inches wideness. Don't go and connect from this line here. But rather connect according to the connect along this slope. For an example, now maybe I would want my own armhole, my, my own neck width to be around five mm. five inches wide. So I will just measure my five inches. This is where my five inches is. Yeah. Maybe I still want to maintain the four. Yeah, I want my five inches. Yeah. But maybe I want it a bit low, a bit lowered. So, so I'll connect the lines. So now we are done with its construction, left with the same allowance. Now you can decide to leave your pattern here like this and you don't want to put allowance on the paper or you can decide to put the allowance right here from the paper. If you decide to do that, maybe you're putting one inch allowance. So just mark your one inch on it like this, like so. that but make sure you make sure you, you use a tape as a guideline for your one inch so when you have done that for the ham hole here I would advise you don't use more than maybe 0 0.5 centimeter or half inch as it's as its allowance so So half inch as allowance for armhole, half inch this way. If you are using this smaller, this smaller neck width, you take it all through to this place. You cut along these dotted lines. Half inch. Half inch. You do same for this. Half 
inch, half inch. Remember one inch for this one. Half inch. Follow the dotted lines. Half inch. Now the back usually you would put zip allowance, zipper allowance. So you could use half inch, you could use one inch. I decide to go for one inch. So this is my one inch extra here for the zipper allowance. You remember that this place now has a new cuff. So trace your one inch along this cuff and cut. Okay, now looking at this that position here, by the time you cut your clothes, make sure that you know you know this position so that you can put your dart properly. But in case you are convinced, you are confused rather, and you don't want to misplace all this all these points, just cut through. Now, if you want to cut through, you can just decide to find me. I'm going for me, I'm going for this five, five inch width. So this five inch width, I'll look for the midpoint here, is around here, the, the midpoint of the remaining shoulder. If you are going for this three inches, just look for the old midpoint here. If you are going for the smaller, smaller O, the smaller neck width, just find the shoulders width, the Many should have width from this one, but rather I'm going for this smaller one. So we connect the lines together. Connect this line together with this. You see? You come here too, and you connect this line, you blend them together. So if you are cutting along this, if you, if you, if you, are, if you are confused about the dart placement, just cut this line straight like this. When you get here, you separate, you remove this out. So, that is all about the pattern drafts. If you do not want to cut out the, the darts, don't forget, just cut along this line. It's a whole piece like this. But if you would like to cut out the dart, just find the midpoint, connect here, connect here, and cut. Now, this is your own piece. You will be working, or rather, I will be using this to work with a lot of clothes. So I need this. If you, if you have successfully done this, don't just destroy this paper. Either you make another copy, or you get a tracing wheel. And I'd like to show you something. Get a tracing wheel and transfer all these measurements by placing your cardboard on it like this use a tracing wheel and trace all these measurements on it so when you trace you trace the front you trace the back when you trace you can now keep this as your own masterpiece and cut this one the way you like it this is my this is the front on fold remember i said i want the five inch on so five inch by four inch neck this is my my ample is a total of 9.5 in the front you see i haven't connected this line so the back five inch by i've extended the the width to two to two two inches by like this this is this is my zipper allowance of one inch see the way it's curved along see So we're done with today's class, today's video. Thank you for watching and we'll meet again in the next class. In the next class I'll be teaching you how to, how to make pattern for, for the sleeve. If you want to use sleeve and how to cut all this out and cut it on your clothes too. Alright, take care.